Welcome back to the Final Days channel. Today is February 10th, 2021. Please feel free to share or reuse any parts of my videos. Before we get into this video, it's important for viewers to know that the technology we, the common people, are allowed to know about is hundreds of years behind the technology that's actually in place around our Earth outer atmosphere and solar system. All of the technology you are about to see comes probably from the assistance of the fallen angels, those who warred against the Heavenly Father and were thus cast down from heaven to this earth thousands of years ago. They have been here much longer than we have and they are much smarter than we are. This information is all found within the Holy Bible. The Bible also tells us that these fallen ones only have a fixed amount of time here before they meet their final judgment and are cast into the lake of fire forever. This time is nearly upon us. They are thus angry at the Holy Father and they despise him. The only way they can get back at him is by dragging all of us down to hell with them. This is their agenda. Many of them have posed as friendly aliens, but they are in fact demonic entities with a dark agenda. Most of the world leaders have joined league with these fallen angels to gain access to their advanced technology out of the fear that one nation will outdo the others if they don't join in. So keep this in mind as we go through these next couple videos. The southeast facing weather camera located in Yukon River Bridge, Alaska shows an object that we've been watching for the past couple years now. I want everyone to take note of the multiple deep craters on this object because in a minute I'm going to show you a picture of how this same object looked last year before our Earth went through an asteroid debris field that should have pummeled parts of our planet to smithereens. We know for absolute certainty that this cannot possibly be a lens flare of our Sun. A lens flare of the Sun is a small picture, a reflection of our Sun, and therefore it must resemble the Sun. Our Sun doesn't have a surface like this. Look how crater pocked this surface is. This is one reason it cannot be a lens flare of the Sun. Additionally, our Sun only rotates once every 27 Earth days. This heavily cratered surface makes its rotation very obvious. Thus, this object cannot be a lens flare of the Sun. Here is the same object last year before we went through the asteroid debris field. In the first frame this object is hidden behind the clouds, further proving it cannot be a lens flare of the Sun. Lens flares can never go behind other objects in a picture or video. My personal opinion is that this object is being used to shield the planet from asteroids. If you look at the comparison between the current image of this object and these images from April, they are quite different. Now this object is very heavily cratered. It's been hit many, many times by asteroids. But we know that this shield will eventually be moved or destroyed because the Bible's book of Revelation describes many objects falling and hitting the earth. So why is all this so secret? Why are we not allowed to know about any of this stuff? Because the enemies of Christ do not want you to know how close to the end we are. Because they do not want you to give your life to Jesus before your time runs out. It's as simple as that. Information is at the end of this video instructing you on how to accept Jesus into your life. 
That's the reason that we have a moon projector and a sun projector to help hide the truth that we are in the very last days. Here we see a projection of the moon from the southeast facing camera at Sawatch Airport in Colorado. This is the moon and the reason it looks so strange here is because the projection of the moon is at an angle to the camera. Much the same way that this piece of paper looks skewed when held at an angle. It's the very same principle. This effect doesn't happen at Moose Pass where the camera is aimed almost directly at the projection of the moon. This frame even shows part of the outline of the projection equipment. The same effect also happens with the projection of the sun. These older images from the northwest facing camera at Portage Glacier, Alaska also show a very skewed image of the sun because the camera is looking at the projected sun from an angle and not straight on. This way not as many projectors are needed because I'm sure that they are very very expensive. And the very same thing is happening here as we saw in the construction paper example when it's held at an angle. It looks similar to the Sun in these images doesn't it? And these things should come as no surprise to those of us who are watching and waiting for the return of our Lord. Jesus tells us in Luke chapter 21 verse 25 that we will see signs in the sky when the end of the age is near. And as Christians we are commanded to watch for these signs so that we are not ignorant of the very late hour in which we are living. Before we close, I want to share another dream that the Lord gave to me. First, I'll provide just a little background so that the dream makes sense. I keep a list of names of people that I know who need salvation. These folks do not know Jesus Christ, and each day I pray for the salvation of these individuals. And if you're not praying for the lost every day, then there is something gravely missing from your spiritual life. Everyone who is truly saved and walking close with the Lord is praying for the lost. Since I no longer have contact with many of the people on my salvation list, one day I was praying over my salvation list and I asked Jesus if any of these people were getting saved. To answer my question, that night he gave me an amazing dream. In this dream I found myself at the wedding feast of the Lamb, which is an event mentioned in several places in the Bible. This is a wedding feast celebration arranged by Jesus, which takes place after he removes his faithful followers from earth, just before his wrath is poured out upon this world full of sin and abomination. In this dream, I found myself standing next to a beautifully set table that was so long it seemed to go on forever. This place was more beautiful than the most beautiful royal palace ballroom I had ever seen in pictures. I knew exactly where I was and it felt wonderful to be there. As I stood next to the table, a man approached the table from the opposite side. I immediately recognized this individual as a man who had been on my salvation list but with whom I had no contact for the past few years. He had been known in his earthly life as an angry, abusive man who despised anything relating to churches or God. I actually couldn't find words to speak because I was utterly amazed to see him here at the Holy Wedding celebration. And finally, in a very humble and serious tone, he said to me, 
I want to thank you for all your prayers. I said, you're welcome. And then we had a brief conversation, but I can't really recall what we talked about. It probably wasn't important. And then the next thing he did was he pulled out a chair and prepared to sit down at the table. And he said in a happy, confident voice, let's celebrate our king. And then the dream ended there. Since I've had no contact with this person, I don't know if his salvation is past, present, or future. Thus, I will continue to pray for his salvation. This is how powerful our prayers are. I got this salvation list idea from my sister who read a book by a man who did this very thing. He wrote down a list of a hundred names of people he knew who needed salvation. And within a few short months, most of the people on his list had given their lives to Christ. It is God's will that all would choose the salvation he offers to everyone. Thus, this man who wrote the book was praying the will of God when he prayed for these people's salvation. When we pray the will of God, we are praying very powerful prayers. And to make our prayers even more powerful, the Bible tells us in James chapter 5, verse 16, that the prayers of the righteous are very effective. The next few screens will tell you how to accept Christ into your life. Simply pause the screens if you need more time to read the text.